Hi kids, welcome to lesson nine of GraviCalc. Each week we build a new digital logic circuit out of marbles. We're doing this to learn how computers and other electronics work on the inside. Today, we're going to build our best track yet, a full adder circuit. In case you're new to my channel, I'm the masked marble and my videos are about all things Gravitrax. I'm the Lone Ranger of the Marble World, and my trusty marble steed is named Silver. But I don't know where my sidekick Tonto is. Unfortunately, a guy named Mr. Political Correctness chased Tonto away because he decided to take offense at Tonto's resemblance to Hollywood movie stereotypes of Native American culture. I miss you, partner. You know, I can't wait for the day when God's kingdom fully rules in the hearts of mankind, because when that happens, people will treat one another with a genuine love from their hearts. Folks will no longer live in fear of the hatred they'll receive from others if their actions don't get the approval of Mr. Political Correctness. Because in the new city that comes from God, nothing unclean or impure will ever enter so Mr. Political Correctness won't be able to get in and pit people against one another with his hatred. What a glorious day that will be when people will be free to love without fear. Come soon, Lord Jesus. In the last lesson, we built a half adder circuit. A half adder can add two single digit binary numbers, which means the most it can add is one plus one. We're going to go back over its logic table because I don't think I did the best job showing you clearly what we were doing. So I've updated the logic table to show that we have two inputs that we are adding, input A and input B, and then we have the output, which is the sum, or A plus B. The first row of the logic table shows that when we add zero plus zero, it equals zero. The second row shows that one plus zero equals one. The third row shows that zero plus one equals one. And the fourth row shows that one plus one equals two. But in the binary number system, how do we write the number two? As a one zero, it's a two bit answer. The bit on the left, the one, is located in the twos place value. And the bit on the right, the zero is located in the ones place value. Now look at the twos place for the first three rows. In a logic of table, it's important to fill in a value for every bit because we need to know what value that bit should have for every set of inputs. So what do you think? Should these bits be zero or one? Well, a one in the twos place would mean that the sum is at least two but zero plus zero is zero, and zero plus one is one. Both these answers are less than two. So the two's place for the first three sums is empty, or zero. So we can write the sums like this. We write the first sum of zero as zero, zero, which means we have nothing in the two's place and nothing in the one's place we write one as zero one, which means we have nothing in the two's place and a one in the one's place. And of course, we write two as one zero, which means we have a one in the two's place and a zero in the one's place, which adds up to two. So each sum in our sum column now has two digits, two bits. Now let's draw a line between the two bits of the sum, or between the two's place and the one's place. We're going to pull apart the two's place bits and the one's place bits so that each is in their own column. The bits on the left are in the two's place value, and when we add binary numbers, the two's place bit is called the carry bit. The bits on the right are in the one's place value. When we add binary numbers, the one's place bit is called the sum bit, because it carries the sum of input A and input B. 
but sometimes the sum won't fit in just the one's place. So, so we have to carry over to the two's place. That's why the two's place bit is called the carry bit when we add binary numbers. So we have two outputs from our half adder, the sum bit and the carry bit. In the logic diagram, these outputs are labeled S for the sum bit and C for the carry bit. Do you see that on the right? The half adder we built last week could add two single digit binary numbers. But how do computers add really big numbers? They do this by having an adder circuit for each place value. They'll have an adder for the ones place, then another adder for the twos place, then another adder for the fours place, and so on. This is actually how we do math. When we add, we add the ones place first, then we add the tens place, and then the hundreds, and so on until we are done. Computers add just like we do, one place value at a time. So how would we add three plus three in the binary number system? Well, that would be one, one, which is three, plus one, one, which is three. We do this math problem the same way we do it in the base 10 number system. We line up the place values and start adding in the ones place. One plus one is two, which means we write a zero in the ones place and carry the one to the twos place. Now we have a problem. In the twos place, we have to add a one from the first number, the first add end, plus a one from the second number, the second add end, plus the one that we carried. That's three bits. This means our adder in the twos place must add three bits together in order to solve the addition problem. Our adder in the ones place only needed to add two bits together, and the half adder could do that because a half adder can add two bits. But because of the carry bit in the twos place value, we now find ourselves needing to add three bits, and that's where a full adder comes in. A full adder can simultaneously add three bits together, the two bits from the add ends being added, as well as the carry bit from the previous place value. Let's finish this math problem. In the twos place, we add one plus one plus one, and that equals three, which is written as one one in the binary number system. So we write a one in the twos place and carry a one to the fours place. There is nothing else to add in the fours place, so we bring that down, and the answer is one, one, zero, which is one, four, plus one, two, plus no ones, or four plus two, which is six. So the answer to the binary math problem of three plus three is six. So now we know why we need a full adder to add three binary bits together. Next, you're going to make a logic table for a full adder. You can print a blank table from the link in the description or simply pause the video and draw out the table that you see on the screen. Notice that the three columns on the left are the three input bits which need to be added. These are input A, input B, and the carry bit which we'll call input C. And the two columns on the right are the two output bits which comprise the sum. The sum of a full adder is A plus B plus C. So now you're going to fill out your logic table. We'll fill out the first two rows together, then you'll finish the table on your own. Okay, ready? The first row is zero plus zero plus zero. So the answer should be zero, which is written zero, zero, meaning no twos, and no ones. The second row is one plus zero plus zero, which equals one. So the answer should be zero one, meaning no twos plus one one. 
Now pause the video here and fill out your logic table by adding the three input bits in each row and writing what the answer is in the two output bits in the right. Make sure to use a pencil because we're going to check your answers in a minute. Now go ahead and pause the video and fill out the logic table and resume once you have completed. And if you don't get it, don't worry, we'll go over it together. Okay, are you done? Let's check our work. The third row of the table is zero plus one plus zero, which is one, again written as zero, one. The fourth row of the table is zero plus zero plus one, which is one. And so the answer is again, zero, one. Row five is one plus one plus zero, which is two. So the answer is one, zero, which is one, two, and zero, ones, or two. Similarly, rows six and seven also add two ones with a zero. So their answer is also two, which is written one, zero. The last row of the table adds one plus one plus one, which is three. We write three as what in binary? As a one, one, which stands for one, two, plus one, one, or three. Just like in the logic table for the half adder, the two bits of the sum are the carry bit and the sum bit. The twos place is called the carry bit, and the ones place is called the sum bit so that we can distinguish or tell apart the input carry bit from the carry bit and the sum, we're going to call the input carry bit carry in. And the carry bit of the sum we'll call carry out. The carry in bit is the bit that carried over from the previous place value, which we're adding to our two add ends. The carry out bit is the twos place bit that must carry over to the next place value because it won't fit in the current place value. So we can imagine that our full adder is sandwiched between two other adders. Our adder takes a carry in bit, which was passed along from the previous adder and our adder outputs a carry out bit, which it passes along to the next adder. That's why a full adder needs to be able to add three bits for each place value. Here's the logic diagram of the full adder. It looks pretty complex, but just focus on the inputs and the outputs. You can see that on the left, we have our three inputs, A, B, and C in, which is the carry in bit. And on the right, we have our two outputs, the sum bit, and the carry out bit. The logic table for a full adder looks like a lot, but you'll notice rows two to four of the logic table are really pretty much the same. They all add a one with two zeros. The next three rows are also similar as they all add two ones with one zero. Keep this in mind as we run our track today. Now that we've finished putting together our logic table, it's time to build a full adder out of marbles. It's Gravitrax time. Build today's track by loading this Gravitrax app code into the free Ravensburger Gravitrax app, then switching to manual mode to get the build instructions. Now go ahead and pause the video and build the track. Before we start running marbles, let's take a quick look around the track. At the top, we have our launch pad. The top left slot will be input A, and the bottom slot will be input B. These are our two add ends. And the top right slot will be the carry in input. Even though we don't have an adder in the previous place value, we're going to go ahead and manually load marbles into the carry in slot 
so we can see how the full adder works. At the bottom of the track, the green landing pad will be our sum bit, and the vortex on the left will be our carry bit. If you have more than one starter set, you can replace the vortex with another green landing pad if you like. We're going to run the track eight times, once for every row of our logic table. So get out your logic tables and see if you get the results from the track to match the table. Use the inputs on the logic table to guide you on which marbles to load in the launch pad. Each time you run the track, make sure the switches are in the positions shown. Both switches should be pointing to their right. First, set up the track with no marbles in any of the inputs so that the inputs are 0, 0, 0. This means the math problem we'll be solving is 0 plus 0 plus 0. Now run the track. Of course, this is boring because no marbles will roll, and the answer will be 0, 0. A 0 in the carry bit and a 0 in the sum bit. Next, run the track with a marble in input A and nothing in the other two slots. So the math problem we're solving now is 1 plus 0 plus 0. We get an output of 0, 1, which is 1. Next, run the track with a marble in input B and nothing in the other two slots. Again, we get an output of 0, 1. For our fourth run, put a marble in input C, which is the carry in bit, and nothing in the other two slots. Again, we get an output of 0, 1. For our fifth run, put marbles in inputs A and B, and nothing in the other slot. This time we get one zero, which is the number two in binary. We have a one in the carry bit and a zero in the sum bit. For our sixth run, put marbles in inputs B and C and nothing in the other slot. Again, we get one zero, which is two. We have a 1 in the carry bit and a 0 in the sum bit. For our 7th run, put marbles in inputs A and C, and nothing in the other slot. Again, we get 1, 0, which is 2. We have a 1 in the carry bit and a 0 in the sum bit. Lastly, let's run our final row with marbles in all three inputs. The full adder should add all three bits, 1 plus 1 plus 1. Pause the video and run the track. In the outputs, we get 1, 1, which is 3 in binary. So the full adder correctly calculates 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. That was fun, but it's still pretty basic math. Well, remember how we said that we need to put full adders side by side in order to add bigger numbers? Next week, we're going to do that for our 10th lesson. We'll build a track with two full adders side by side so that the carry bit from the first one can cascade over into the next place value. That circuit will be able to add up to six. Next week's track will require two Gravitrack starter sets, a scoop, and a volcano. The volcano is optional because if you don't have a volcano, you can substitute a second launch pad. But a volcano is necessary if you want the track to automatically run all the way through from start to end. Without the volcano, you will have to manually press the launch pad to start the adder in each place value. 
If you own three starter sets, that's even better because I'll also give you the code to build an adding computer consisting of three adders that can add up to 14. To build that circuit, you'll need three starter sets, two scoops, and two volcanoes. Again, volcanoes are optional. So our 10th lesson is going to be our most awesome track yet. I'm going to have to break out the big table just to build it, so don't miss it. Okay, see you next week.